Mobile video gaming is almost as old as the industry itself. Well, as soon as people figured out how to actually make it happen. However, with the rise of the mobile phone, there have been plenty of attempts to fuse the two together in some noble and some not quite so noble ways. Welcome to Does Whatever Spider Can, where we take a look back at the webhead's long and varying gaming career and find out just how much they replicate Spidey's signature powers. In this episode, we'll be looking at Spidey's most recent and continuing adventures on the modern touchscreen gaming machines. That some people occasionally used to talk to each other. Spider-Man Unlimited was developed and released by Gameloft in 2014 on the iOS, Android, and Windows Phone platforms. Sorry, Nokia 3210, but we still love you and your glorious snake. So the basic plot is that Spidey is hanging around when he is suddenly engaged by a power swap green, I mean pink, sorry, gold goblin. Hey, did you get a new outfit? Blow out sale at the bad guy Long John Emporium? The worst part about every new dimension is hearing the same tired jokes over and over. You chase after him, beat him up, then he tells you the basic plot contrivance that the interdimensional Sinister Six is going to hack the planet by opening up a 2012 cliché. You know you're Don Goof because I can't believe it's not Samuel Jackson shows up and you get recruited into the Avengers Initiative. Admittedly, they have experience with sky portals. I told you this was a 2012 cliché. Well, your feet start running and they don't stop running. Well, that is until you hit an obstacle or finish the goal of the level. And even then, you can just get up and keep running. You basically make your way through several levels and complete goals such as collect certain items, beat up thugs, or just run to the end of the level. Yeah, pretty simple. Every couple of levels you get to beat up a new palette swap of Spidey's classic villains, including Vulture, Sandman, Dr. Octopus, and Mysterio. You only get to confront a different villain every 20 stages, so your patience will probably wear a little thin by then. Especially as the amount of goals you need to achieve keeps getting larger and the stage gets faster as you move along. Never mind that sometimes the items just don't spawn anywhere near constant enough. To aid you in your quest, you need to spend what appears to be the Marvel Mobile Game McGuffin called ISO 8. They've come to harvest a rare isotope called ISO 8 Marvel. ISO 8 can occasionally be rewarded at stage completion, but the most reliable way it can be gained is via perishable loot crates or with real money. It's sort of just like the mobile games want you to do that. There are free in-game currency which consists of collecting yellow vials. They probably could pick a better colour than that. You can use this to unlock card slots, game random common spideys, but not much else really. Their only really good use is that you can preempt some obstacles by following the trail while running. Once you realise this, you'll soon recognise where potential dangers might lie in their positioning. So functionally, the game is what's called an endless runner. Because you run in a direction, well, forever? This has been a mobile game, you swipe left and right on screen to move Spidey and avoid obstacles. Swipe up to make him jump either over obstacles or onto higher platforms. Use motion controls to steer when you climb up and down walls. And tap and hold to web swing in certain situations. You also have different enemies which you can swipe up and down to attack, although certain enemies require specific directions. Standard grunts can be attacked either way. Shield grunts need to be swiped down to kick underneath, and hovering grunts need to be swiped up so you can jump and punch them. To attack the bosses, you first need to get close enough to them, then you need to hit the blue shield symbols to cause damage, then finally when you deplete the energy enough, you jump up and tap the screen to punch the crap out of them. There are also mini stages where you're attacking one of Dr. Octopus's giant death things. Basically you need to dodge stuff till you reach the end of the run, and hit a button, Frank. Don't worry, you only have to do this four times to get the maximum fun out of it. You start the game off with five play tokens which you use to spend to access the stage. These regenerate over time, so if you burn these too quickly, you can just exit the game and they'll just respawn in a few minutes. If you fail, you get the option of either watching an advert, that is if you have a decent internet connection, or spend some ISO 8 and let another Spidey take over and continue. Unless you have mad skills and reflexes of steel, you're probably going to use that on later levels when you're 99% complete and you just want to finish the damn game. Well, let's face it, that 30 seconds you're wasting while waiting will at least help reclaim a token. You are sometimes given the option of watching an advert for a loot crate, but this often never really gives you anything except a loss of data and battery life. To keep this game going, there are various quests and side missions daily activities with leaderboards, with rewards for participating, plus a daily login bonus. The game's biggest draw card has been able to collect the different spiders that come on... Uh, cards. However, because this is a mobile game, these are drawn randomly. 
and naturally they have various rarities, so all the great characters are next to impossible to get. To get the high quality cards, you either have to hazard a chance with a loot crate, which costs ISO 8, or you can get them via card expansion packs, that costs real world money. My spidey sense is detecting a pattern here. Each card starts with a level cap of 10, which you need to rage in stages of 10 to get the bigger bonuses out of it. This has an interesting mechanic that can use your other cards to help raise the level cap. Unfortunately, this will only get you so far as naturally you need to spend money to get the ingredients you need to level it fully. That strange tingling is back again. The genuinely cool thing about this game is that they tried to include as many playable versions of Spidey as they could get the rights to. This not only includes alternate versions of Spidey himself, but also characters like Spider-Woman, Spider-Ham, and multitudes of variants of them all too. Apparently it was Marvel themselves that have been limiting the amount of characters available. However, they have let Gameloft expand their roster over time. The game itself includes events which are based on major storylines in the comics, but often they are locked behind paywalls as you need to use particular characters to play them, and the only way to get them is you should know by now. Yes, this game is pretty much like most mobile games in the way it not so subtly wants to open your wallet and suckle at your credit card's teat. What's bothersome is that it's not that bad a game, well all things considered. Sure it suffers from issues of repeatability, especially as I got sick and tired of constantly seeing that exact same layout at Oscorp for 20 stages. However, the simplicity of the game and being able to play it on so many different spideys just appeals on a really deep level to me. I really want to like this game, I really want to play it more, but ultimately this game just isn't as unlimited as the title suggests. I honestly thought I'd have more to say about this, but the more I played it the more the excitement just disappeared. Eventually I only kept playing it for footage. I have recorded way too many hours for this review alone and I still feel like I'm getting nowhere. I guess I have a bit more fondness for this than games like, say, Amazing Spider-Man and Captain America and Doctor Doom's Revenge, but there really isn't enough to make me want to keep going. Ultimately what makes this game enjoyable is using a character like Spider-Man and his abilities to freshen up a simplistic and in my honest opinion, a rapidly tiring genre. What bogs this game down is the same issues with practically most mobile games, mostly the times with microtransactions and random card collecting systems. When a game is designed to encourage the usage of its purchasable currency, especially when it affects every single aspect of its design, it rapidly loses favour with me. Granted this is not as egregious as other games, it still has the negative aspects of the current trend of mobile gaming and their monetization methods. Remember that this tedium and grind is deliberately designed by the publisher to encourage players to literally bypass it all. Get it? Bypass? You, you buy to pass the... the... Uh, forget it. I generally don't have an issue with DLC, or even buying in-game items if you're enjoying it. I don't even mind throwing in a couple of bucks to get some loot as I'm exploring the game. However, paying 30 bucks to buy a card you need to play part of the game is pretty gross, especially as you're not even guaranteed access to other content with it. Never mind that you have to pay if you want to fully unlock every level on just that one card, or pay even more to access other gated off content. What you're basically looking at is a free game with 30 to 40 dollar side missions, plus more if you want to attempt to make the bestest card ever. What is especially galling is how this trend is currently affecting other aspects of gaming. Okay, I won't go into it as plenty of other pundits and journalists have articles and I highly recommend seeking these out. So before I forever purge this from my memory of both my mobile and my brain, does this do whatever a spider can? Surprisingly yes. Whilst there isn't any overt displays of spider strength, seeing the thugs fly through the air with each punch is pretty satisfying. Spidey can jump spectacularly high in the game, and he can dodge as effectively as you can swipe him. Often this is enough to narrowly avoid a faceplant. Unfortunately, the only time you can use your webbing is swinging through the city or in a cunt scene, but if you mistake your swing, it can lead to a fast game over. I wish there was more parts with wall crawling. But it does feel strangely nice and intuitive to move Spidey by tilting the phone, and at least breaks up the swiping monotony. Finally, we have a good use for the spider sense. Occasionally there will be obstacles like lasers, and time will slow down just enough for you to react accordingly. Of course, if you pay attention fast enough, you should be able to spot them. But it's a nice inclusion, even though it should really also work for the rest of the obstacles. Oh well. Well, since this review is running a little short, Here's something that popped up when I was searching for the game, and it's been stuck in my head ever since. The Amazing Iron Spider! Let's be brutally honest up front, this is not a good game. It's not an entirely terrible one either. 
developed by Brain Freeze, whose works appear exclusively for Android mobiles. This company has a strange fascination with smashing Iron Man with other heroes including Batman and Wolverine. On the surface it feels like this game is just another base endless runner acid pack with those weird Iron Man with Spider-Man skins just planted on. Well it is kind of, but there are a couple of other different mechanics also involved that mix it up a little. First you have two to three choices to manage the many gaps in the stage, a jump button, a rope and grapple button, and occasionally a charge limited flight button. Simply put, if you manage to screw up a jump, which is possible because the controls are just not that responsive, you can potentially save yourself with the grapple. The grapple seems to tie into the idea of Spider-Man, but it just feels redundant since you're running around in power armor. Conversely, your limited flight function harkens closer to Iron Man, but is very short-lived and is recharged by running. Like Spider-Man Unlimited, there is a collectible item littered throughout the stage in the form of coins. Once you collect enough, you can unlock more characters in the form of other mashups with Spider-Man armors and Spidey characters. You also have an overheat bar at the top that gets filled when you're obstructed or land too hard. There are health pickups that immediately fix your armor, which is good because if you don't then... This can get annoying as it seems to fill up quickly if you get obstructed as the animation takes way too long to clear an obstacle. The biggest pain in the butt is that when you die, you have to endure the standard mobile gaming annoyance that is the unskippable and often obnoxious advert, often for other more popular mobile games. Hell, even going back to the main menu causes you to watch an advert. Considering how easy it is to die, you'll be seeing this a lot. Not that you really play it for long because the novelty quickly dies out. Don't wish to be pestered by those annoying ads? Then all you need is to spend 10,000 coins to remove them. As you get anywhere between zero and maybe a hundred coins in a one, you've got a long wait on your hands. Alternatively, you can spend $1.19 to remove the ads. As this game wasn't even worth that, I politely declined. Would I recommend this game? No. Unless you have a particular desire to play cheap, trashy, tie-in games, then you won't find any other amusement here. It's an average game with a gimmick to get the attention of the comic book nerd, but you'll have a much better experience with Spider-Man Limited.